Hi and welcome to Parkinson's Disease Education. In today's video we're going to be talking about reversing Parkinson's disease through fast walking as well as what the heck is GDNF. Be sure to stay tuned for the rest of the video and look for a special message from me in which I will ask for some interaction from you in the comments. So stay tuned, let's roll the rest of the video. Okay, so the title of this video probably grabbed you, at least I hope it did, because this topic definitely grabbed me about a week ago, and I wanted to share what I found and kind of what spurred the topic in the first place. I have a Facebook group called Parkinson's Warriors International, and uh, one of my members, somebody I connected with online is a gentleman named John Pepper, who has Parkinson's disease. I'm not breaking any kind of confidentiality there because this gentleman is a public figure who has written blog articles and published many YouTube videos on the topic of reversing Parkinson's disease. His claim to fame is that fast walking has kept his Parkinson's symptoms at bay uh, and or prevented progression of PD since the early 1990s. In a recent video, which you probably saw in the teaser short that I posted earlier today, he discussed fast walking and also the connection with a particular molecule in the body called GDNF. So first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about what GDNF actually is. And secondly, I'd like to talk about its role in Parkinson's disease and, and or in preventing or improving the symptoms of the disease. First of all, GDNF stands for glial cell derived neurotropic factor. GDNF is a protein that essentially supports cells in the brain. If you break down the term, first we have glial cell derived. So glial cells are supportive cells in the brain. Essentially, wherever you find brain cells, neurons, axons, oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, all of those other types of, of neural tissue, or neural cells rather, you're going to have glial cells involved in their protection and in their support. So because of that, we get the term neurotropic. Neurotropic essentially means feeding or nourishing the nerves. So neurotropic refers to the ability of these glial cell derived cells or factors or proteins to help to nurture and protect nerve tissue. Now, there's been said to be a connection between GDNF and particularly the dopaminergic nerve tissue in the brain, which would be associated with Parkinson's disease because it is a, by nature, a dopaminergic issue. The premise of the video that John recorded was basically that GDNF has been shown to increase after fast walking or other forms of high intensity exercise, particularly aerobics. In his video, he cites a study that was published by the Mayo Clinic in 2019. Another aspect of this video I was hoping to accomplish was to kind of highlight what research, if any, that there is behind this claim. Now, I'll be honest with you, I have not been able to find a specific study published by Mayo specifically on this topic. However, there is some recent research that alludes to the fact that there may be something to this. But, as you'll see, there's not really any specific or definitive proof or claim in research clinically that shows that GDNF absolutely will increase with exercise further that it will help to prevent the decline of Parkinson's disease or indeed reverse it. Now before I continue, I just want to make a statement that this is not meant to detract from John Pepper and his work as an individual with Parkinson's who has gone through a specific experience related to fast walking and other exercise in so-called reversal of Parkinson's disease. He has an anecdotal evidence of his ability to keep the disease at bay through his habits and activities. That is not to say that it is proof that it will work in all persons with Parkinson's disease any more than high dose thiamine or vitamin B1 might work for persons with Parkinson's disease. 
As with everything with Parkinson's and other conditions, results may vary. So take what you find online with a grain of salt, and including this video, if I'm wrong and you find something in the research that disproves what I'm saying today, please share it with me because I definitely want to do another follow-up on this and, uh, and talk about it. But as of now, as of the research, the I should say the review of current research that I've done, I'm not finding anything to really support this. What I can tell you is thus far in the research, animal models have most definitely proven GDNF can be increased as a result of exercise. A more recent study, and this is really the only definitive one that I can find on human beings, this was completed in 2021, or published, I should say, in 2021 in the Journal of Experimental Gerontology. This specifically looked at the, and this is the title of the, of the article, is Effects of Task-Oriented Training Combined with Aerobic Training on Serum BDNF, that's Brain-Derived Neurotropic Factor, GDNF, IGF-1, VEGF, TNF-alpha, and IL-1 beta levels in people with Parkinson's disease, a randomized controlled study. So in this study, they had 40 people randomized into an eight weeks of either an exercise group or a control group. The exercise group combined task-oriented training with aerobic exercise, and the control group had aerobic exercise by itself. Out of the 40 originally in the study, 29 completed it. Now unfortunately in this study, after intervention, no significant difference was observed between the groups regarding any levels of the factors we just discussed earlier. Further, the group Cure Parkinson's out of the UK published the results of the Bristol GDNF study in 2019. The GDNF study had two phases, of which the second phase showed that clinic-based methods of assessment indicated no significant effect between treatment and placebo groups. In that study, they weren't necessarily looking at serum levels of GDNF or levels in any particular area, rather changes in the brain tissue itself. Further, if you do specifically look at publications by Mayo Clinic, what you will find is a literature review published in 2018 written by Dr. J. Eric Alskog, who is actually in the Movement Disorder Clinic at Mayo. The long and the short of the literature review is that even though scientific evidence proves that ongoing aerobic exercise can be a means to slow PD progression, there is not any specific evidence cited to the effect that GDNF in particular is increased with that exercise. Though he does state that animal studies have shown an increase in GDNF and BDNF. So what these results tell me is that we know exercise, particularly aerobic exercise, can help curb the symptoms of Parkinson's disease or at least greatly improve them whether it prevents them or not is another story however one thing that I can say is that there's nothing that I can find in the literature that states that fast walking particularly is the answer to this problem what I can tell you is that other forms of exercise such as high intensity interval training cycling running, walking, essentially the overarching category of aerobic exercise it definitely has positive effects. It's just we don't really have any evidence that I can find that there's a specific type of aerobic exercise that really does the trick. Obviously in John's case, fast walking has had a tremendous impact on him. And I applaud his efforts to educate people on this and to encourage people to do the same. What I would also encourage though is that we take it with a grain of salt and know that results may vary. It may or may not work for you. And if it doesn't, try something that does work for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you saw my secret message and let me know in the comments below. I'll know if you saw it. Thanks for watching. As always, be empowered. I'll catch you in the next video.